To use the planisphere, rotate the top wheel until today's date lines up with the current time. This example shows December 14th at midnight. After setting the date and time, hold the planisphere with the direction you are facing shown at the bottom. In this example, we are looking south. Stars on the chart are shown in black. The brighter stars will appear larger, dimmer stars are smaller. The constellation lines are shown on the chart in purple. Common names for prominent stars are shown in black. Greek-lettered Bayer designations are shown in gray. Messier objects and NGC objects are shown in blue. Light blue shading shows the path of the Milky Way. The purple lines radiating out from the center of the chart mark right ascension in hours. Use these lines to locate objects by their polar coordinates. Correspondingly, purple circles mark declination in 10 degree increments. The celestial equator, or zero degrees in declination, is shown in black. Above this line, towards the center of the chart, declination increases by 10 degrees per circle. Below this line, declination decreases. Double stars are shown on the chart with a line splitting them in two. A larger circle surrounds variable stars showing that they sometimes increase in brightness. Galaxies are drawn on the chart as ellipses. Face on galaxies will be almost round. Edge on galaxies will be long and thin. Square symbols on the chart denote bright nebula. This circle with a cross denotes planetary nebula. Open clusters are shown with a small starburst symbol. And this circular symbol with an inset cross denotes globular clusters. The star chart was designed to be used under red light. Stars and deep space objects will be shown in a dark black. Constellation lines, coordinate grids, and other symbols will be shown in shades of gray. As you can see on the chart, there are many galaxies packed into a small space in Virgo. Turn the planisphere over and look on the back for a detailed finder chart. The Virgo locator chart has stars plotted down to magnitude 11. That's similar to the stars you would see while looking through a 6-inch telescope. The chart was designed to be used at the telescope you can use it to help identify the correct galaxy that you're trying to observe and also to star hop between galaxies. Messier galaxies are drawn in blue and will appear dark black under red light. NGC galaxies are drawn in purple and will show up as gray under red light. Additional locator charts are included for several difficult or easily misidentified objects. The locator charts show a section of sky about 5 degrees wide. That's similar to the view through the finder on most telescopes. Stars in the locator charts are shown down to magnitude 11. The brighter stars on the chart will show up in your finder, the dimmer stars will be visible in your main scope. When setting the time and date on the planisphere, 
Be sure to look for meteor shower icons along the edge of the planisphere. These indicate that a meteor shower peaks around this date. Make note of the date, then turn the planisphere over to refer to the meteor shower reference on the back. This example shows the Perseids, which peak around August 12th of each year and are a relatively strong meteor shower. See the back of the planisphere for reference data for the sun, moon, and planets. This information is often useful at public star parties. It shows the distance from the sun to each object, as well as the light travel time from the sun. The size or diameter of each object is also shown, as well as the length of each planet's day. The chart also shows the length of each planet's year, the time it takes to orbit the sun. The sun itself takes about 250 million years to orbit the center of the galaxy. The back of the planisphere also contains reference information for deep space objects plotted on the star chart. It includes a symbol showing the type of each object, as well as the Messier or NGC catalog number for each object. The common name or description of each object is also shown in the table. The table also includes the polar coordinates of each object, including the right ascension in hours and the declination. Later in this video, we will show you how to use this information to locate objects on the front of the planisphere. The table also shows the visual magnitude or brightness of each object. Smaller numbers are brighter, larger numbers are dimmer. The constellation for each object is also shown. And finally, the distance to each object in thousands of light years. To find a specific object on the star chart, first look that object up in the table. Note the right ascension in hours and the declination. In this example, we will locate M8. After making note of the right ascension and declination for the object, Turn the planisphere over to find the object on the star chart. Use 24 hour time to easily find the right ascension on the edge of the chart. 18 hours is equivalent to 6 o'clock p.m. Center this right ascension line in the transparent window of the planisphere. Now we need to find our declination. First, identify the celestial equator. It's the black circle near the middle of the transparent window. In this example, we're looking for declination minus 24.4. That's almost two and a half declination circles below the equator, towards the bottom of the chart. At the intersection of these two lines, we should find our object. And there it is, M8. Many amateur astronomers take advantage of the new moon in March to view all 100 Messier objects in a single night, a Messier marathon. It's easy to miss a few if you get them in the wrong order. So that's why we provided this easy guide to the optimal order for the March marathon on the back of the planisphere.